Saturday, Tuesday, Thursday, week eight, program design review. Take her away, Jeremy. All right, so uh, Complex Hurricane, um, 25 aunts on all five stations. Um, on this one, if it gets overcrowded, you add the six station, you can reduce the times down to 20 because the Complex Hurricane usually uh, take up um, the session. So you want to reduce the time to 2010. If uh, you have an overcrowded class, you got to go six stations with this one. But again, the complex is a fan favorite, uh, being that you are stationary. So you just work with the same three exercises, three times each. A total of nine sets, you got a 40 second transition to the next station. Uh, it helps with um, any confusion, right? If, if weights are being moved, like you keep your whole, your, your same weight the entire time. You look at their, these, these stations as their own little mini circuit, and you're going through three times. Spray stuff, if your people are still on, you know, cleaning your equipment like, you know, COVID is still going on. Uh, you can definitely clean the equipment, grab some water, and it transitions to the next station. Demonstrations do take a little longer. Uh, however, once you get started, it's nonstop. You see the my zones is yellow, red, the whole the whole time once they get going. Um, I do encourage active re active active um recovery. So like as we are demonstrating, if people want to like jog in place, we had to put that jump rope. They can keep moving that way. Um. If they feel like the sessions are taking too long. Uh, however, a lot of the stuff I do on this, I try to keep it unilateral so you're not demonstrating three different exercises. I do, so it's not, I add three exercises to some stations just because I don't want to feel monotonous. You're just doing you just doing one exercise and hit the other. So unilateral, unilateral. So a couple of stations I'll add three different exercises just to add some more flavor to it. But most of the stations will consist of uh, unilateral, so you don't have to even demonstrate the third movement, just say you hit the other side. So for a demonstration, a dumbbell straight station, you'll see that we do have three different here. Uh, yeah, yeah, really Ricardo, Ricardo had something here real quick. I don't know. Yeah. Well, I, I just raised my hand because I didn't want to interrupt whenever it's appropriate. I just wanted to say that for us, uh, it, it works better to have them all be two demos because so often, actually more often than not, we're coaching with only one coach and trying to zip through those demos. Uh, plus, we have an older population, and them, the more they have to try to remember, the more confusing it gets, you know. So I don't know if there could be an alternate for us, you know, or places like us where – where they're where we have those unilateral for all five stations. Just wanted to ask. Oh, uh, I mean, I'm pretty sure we could figure some out. You know what I mean? Uh, just because it does get a little harder to try to hit every movement pattern too if we are doing this unilateral. Um, so as long as you can see that we can conquer, you know, getting the squat, hinge, uh, push, pull, horizontal and vertical, a single leg. And doing unilateral stuff, which you know you could do like there's some more combination of stuff like for the kettlebells, we could do something like um if there wasn't a press um overhead, you can do like a bottoms up kettlebell press, right? So you're doing a single leg and you're getting overhead press on that. So like if you want to change, for example, that station, you could possibly yeah. Well, like for example, the dumbbell station. I don't know. I'm just thinking out loud and asking for help, but maybe I could do a single arm clean for two of them, and the third one be the arch press or something. Yeah, I mean, I think a single arm clean might be a little odd, but if it works for you, it works. Um, because the arch press is obviously that's one one dumbbell, but. Hmm. Or like with what? that, what? you could do it. Yeah, I mean, or even taking the clean out and just do more of a uh, 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 offset deadlift with a bicep curl. So you, then you would still get your um, single leg or single. You get your uh, your hinge with the the vertical pull because really what a clean does is giving you your the pull you need to come up to your chest in a hinge. So that's a good power movement. So if you did an arc press for exercise one, then you get your vertical push and then. Um, you can do a dumbbell, single arm deadlift to a bicep curl, right side and left side. Great. Thank you. I appreciate the options. 
and that will show you that because then would I would say the modifier for a clean would be a a, a deadlift to a bicep curl, right? So if you're not gonna go with the power with a clean, you would just hinge and come up with a curl. Uh, make the same movement without without actually doing the, the actual clean clean the cleaning process of it. So that could be a way to definitely fix that one. Um, so yeah, with the, the clean uh, good power movement, it is gonna be generated from the hips. So you wanna uh, do more of a, a drive your hip hinge. So you're bending back and coming up with the dumbbells, neutral grip up to the shoulders um, and back down. Now, if that is aggressive, then you will focus on just doing like an RDL, bringing your hands down to the knees, shins area, and then coming up with a bicep curl. Full hip, full hip extension before you get the curl, though, come up, finish the movement, and hit the bicep curl um, for that. The arc press, um, uh, go heavy with the weight. So you're just going to go shoulder to shoulder for that 25 seconds. And if the issues with the shoulders, you can do a cross body diagonal chop with a dumbbell, go from hip to shoulder, hip to shoulder, still crossing the body so you're not focused on one side uh, within that 25 um, seconds. But yeah, definitely challenge weight on that because you can go heavier with it if the shoulders allow you to. Uh, dumbbell, squat thrust, super, there's uh, um, several levels to this one. Um, you're gonna keep your feet back. As you come up, you're gonna hop your feet on the outside of the dumbbells and you're bringing the dumbbells up with you. So you can do it. You can walk it out, come up with a squat. Um, you can leave the dumbbells on the ground if there's going to be too much stress on your back. Um, or if you got the Jedi's in the room, you can always do the jump, the squat thrust, hands on the dumbbells as you come up, legs on the outside. You can add a jump squat out of the dumbbells. So, um, but again, that could be one that is just a teachable one, not one you show to the class. Because you have any Jedi's in the class, and he does explain that in the video as well. Um, that they can add a little hop with the dumbbells in their hands, but you do want to make sure the feet come on the outside of the dumbbells on that one. So the power band stations, keeping the power bands because you'll want to like interchange equipment, uh, squat with a press. There's no one you can challenge pace, uh, resistance by having to walk further away. Um, you could just squat, press up, right? Or if they want to add more power, more explosion, add a plyo to it, they can kind of similar to what we're doing this week with a jump, squat with a row. They can jump, and as they come up, they can press about that squat. So you can add more uh, to intensify that one. Um, and again, it wouldn't help get the heart rate up, you know, because I know people want their my zone points. So that could be a way to get their, mind, their heart rate up. Um, power being torso twist, so they have a face. The same direction for round one, round uh, the for the exercise two, face one direction, exercise three, face the opposite direction, arms out front, uh, inside. Well, you want to keep the hands um right in front of the pec, so uh, right in front of the chest. So you find that you are right in the band, just pulling you back to the anchor point. Walk closer because the whole point of it is to keep it right in front of your chest as you twist, come back. All right, so you really want to focus on you controlling the band, don't let the band control you. So if you are trying to go too far and you're really compromising form or you're pulling too far um, away, or if you see that it's pulling you to it, go a little closer, get your feet right, uh, keep a good base as you get that rotation. So we're going to be working in rotation uh, on this one uh, to keep the core engaged. So around exercise two, you'll face one direction, exercise three is going to switch that up. Um, Good for like baseball players, golf players, working the transverse region um, of your core. Uh, this will conquer, although we're standing up, but this will conquer our uh, horizontal um, push. So instead of us doing like a push up or a chest press, kind of save the shoulders on this, go a little lighter weight. You're gonna get a single leg balance. Um, as you get the halo, work your shoulder mobility overhead, come over here, and you wanna get fully extend. So Nothing too crazy. So if you have to like jerk it, I want you to, people should come out and be able to focus on uh, fully extend the kettlebell out, come back in control, halo, the opposite side, walk it out, while they have the single leg balance and get that full push. So really focus on still get a push, full extended, controlling the weight, don't let the weight control you. Um, so don't go too heavy with the kettlebells on that one. If the balance is an issue, always touch your toe down the ground. 80-20 rule, put 80% of your weight on that leg that is down. Um, uh, then you got the wood chop. So wood chop, um, we'll get the hinge, more of a swing. Now, Ricardo, for this one, you can just do, even if you want to do like a three-point row, a kettlebell three-point row on the right and on the left, uh, just because we are conquering our hinge with the clean already. 
um, the workshop, you can just kind of sub that out and then just do maybe a three point row for uh, exercise two and exercise three uh, to keep that simple for you. And so get your uh, horizontal pool because that's what we need that goblet row to conquer our horizontal pool since we don't have that out there. Um, workshop is one that we we got from um, uh, Perform Better in Chicago. Yeah, Chicago. We did it with Carlos Santana. Uh, a good a good power one. You can even with the wood chop. You can even add um even more with a hop. Again, nothing too crazy, nothing heavy. Um, because it could be a lot in the back. So again, focus on weight control. Uh, mind muscle connection, keeping the core engaged as you're bringing the kettlebell under your your legs and it coming above the head. Um, uh, so getting the hinge on there too. Goblet row. Um, just trying to keep it simple. You're working with one kettlebell and really with all these movements, you could probably. Stick with well, I mean, goblet roll. You can probably go heavier. You, you can go heavier with that. Um, but again, it would be grip strength because it is a lot harder to hold a kettlebell by the head as you are the actual bell part as you roll it up. So you're gonna be work, work, really working on grip strength. You know, feel the tension in your lats, your chest as you come up with that roll. Draw the elbows tight to the torso. So hitting the horizontal pull on this. So again, if um, you want to focus on this unilateral stuff, you can definitely throw a three point roll there to avoid um having three different exercises in that movement. Um, and that's the kettlebell area. And so then we're gonna go to the bar. So back to the bar, we got the super bands up there. So I'll work with that. Switch stands or feet square. So you're not you know, thinking about having to switch your feet up halfway through on that last uh, round. Um, elbows high, you wanna come above the head. The further you are up on the band, more resistance you're gonna get on it, okay? Elbows are in, not flared out, you wanna keep them in. Um, as a coach, I'll even bring my hands on their elbow like so, to really show that they're really extending and bending, because you'll see a lot of times people might actually pull their shoulders to get the the, uh, the band going, which you really wanna focus on bending and extending at the elbow joint as you come overhead. If that's too much on the shoulders, just face the wall, and stick with a classic uh, tricep uh, pull down. Um, if you're doing a pull down, you always pull away, you know, for even more engagement on that one. For get the mid head going on that one, Travis. Um, the high to low pulls a good another one to get the heart rate up, cardio. So you're gonna go across body, get core speed. So challenge pace on this one. Uh, another one I really like to see arms straighter. So you really engage in the core as you come through, not chopping it, trying to keep your arms straight as you go shoulder to hip. Uh, getting the feet going as well. So you're gonna get the little scissor motion as you come from shoulder down to hip, cross that body. So exercise two, face one way. Exercise three, face the opposite way. If they're not working with a the hop, they can simply just walk that out. If it is too much for your arm straight, by all means, bend the elbow, go shoulder to hips as you cross it, as you face laterally with that. Um, and then to the sandbag surge, rams, uh, pull over leg raise, we can get a core on this one, a vertical pull, it be on the back. So on this, get the pullover, work in the lats. You want to end right above the chest on a pullover, not going out to the waist. So as you come up and above the chest, engage the lats, uh, work the pecs as well as you get that pullover motion. Um, if that is issue with the shoulders, you know, real talk, honestly, like you need to do a leg raise and then go into a scapular floor slide. Uh, cause again, if they lack that certain mobility, probably come overhead is not the best to pull. So even they can still incorporate the core by doing a leg raise, come back down and just do a scapular floor side, um, on that to work the shoulders. If they're not going to have, if they have issues pulling the weight over their head. Then you have a single leg squat. So working with a uh, single leg here, weight in the heel. So you want to come on the outside of the leg that's down. So if your left leg is down, you want to come on the outside with that bag. So you can get full range of motion and really focus on sitting the weight in the heel, not bending at the waist. A lot of times when you see people do this, they actually, you see them bending more than you're squatting. So you uh, you want to make sure they are squatting down, uh, weight in the heels. You will feel the activation of loose the quad um, if done correctly. And they can always hit a B stance so or put the toe down the ground, but still make these sure they are squatting. So they'll do a left leg, right leg, right leg, left leg. And if you are doing a sixation, if you have to get to a sixation, we have your reverse lunge with a twist, and you have a side plank, side crunch, right, left, and switch those. Um, both those can be done from um your 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 foot on your foot, your knee, 
or an elevated surface as you do that way you progress it. Uh, you have light dumbbells around, you can add a light dumbbell to incorporate that side plank, side crunch. And then for the finisher. Finisher. Legs, legs and, booty. and booty. Legs and booty. So getting the legs working. Um, three paws, uh, seeing low with the split squat, switch it. Uh, reverse cross over lunge with a jump, and you have your one and a half jump squats. So you go all the way down, halfway, all the way down, all the way up. So you want to stay low, all the way, halfway, all the way. So a little pause. So you're not coming fully extended on that um second squat. So you're gonna go all the way down, halfway, all the way down, and then come back up and add more um <coughs> not about that one. Whole bunch of songs you can work on this one, booty booty, uh by Bubba Sparks. Um you have uh <laughs> so you can do you can do Sir Miss a lot. That one is <laughs> I like big butts. That's I, I a use, one. I use that one a lot. <laughs> yeah. That's a fun one. Um, I said that one. song is still one of the best told stories of all times at Columbia City. <laughs> Sir Miss a lot. I I remember you played it one time when Vicky was doing something, right? Or yeah. So she hands me the phone. And we were going to do the I, a plank or push up or something. We didn't want butts in the air. I forget what it was. Maybe it was a dive bomber or something. She hands me the phone. I go to play it and I notice it's the explicit version. Oh, so shoot. I'm like, oh crap. So super fast on the fly. I look up the, uh, you know, non explicit version and get it ready to play, totally forgetting about the entry where they're talking, you know, look at that butt. And uh, so I real quick and I queue it up and I press play and right on time, I press the button and it says, look at that butt. It's mm -hmm. just out there. She uh -huh. looks like a total prostitute. You oh, know? gosh. And, she, <laughs> and yeah. she just melts into the floor and the women are all turned around looking at me and two of the church ladies are, said, hey, we're going to pray for you, Ricardo. Oh, that's, <laughs> that's funny. That's <laughs> Well, I Kristen's still hosting. I just have to hop on to this other eleven thirty meeting, but you guys can uh, still go. But Jeremy, thank you for today. I do appreciate. Yes, sir. Um, I'll do another one. Bootylicious Dustin Child is a good one too that we play uh, for um, like legs and booties. So, Kristen, you'll have to share if there's a. But that's it. So if you guys got any questions, comments, concerns? Oh, there we go. Throw them at me. No. All right. Anybody have anything else? Possible fitness conference. Recording in progress. Jeremy, thanks for the suggestions to help us out there. I really yeah. appreciate it. Yeah, and I'll, uh, I'll keep it in mind. Like I, 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 I personally, because I know even even with two coaches, you know, you you can get you get gas trying to coach them, but then I try to, like I said, I'll try to keep it to like two like that, but I'll keep it in mind if we just try to do one um, and then give you options, right? So either either have to put like a highlight or something like that yeah. in there to say like, this will be a way that you can conquer this or that, you know what I mean? To make sure we're yeah. getting all the movements. Cause it does get a little tricky when I do unilateral stuff like that. It's like, oh man, where can I put this? So it's like, okay, can I put a horizontal push in the, the finisher to make up for, cause we don't have one in the actual workout. So um, just just those are the thoughts that when I do it, it comes to my head. So having like a, a station with three takes away of just, you know, the monotony of it. And then it helps me make sure we are covering all the principles, so. Yeah, yeah, I understand. But thank you, I appreciate the help and the accommodation. Great, you just saw the ball and then you're- I think you goes off the ball. So are we all uh, good? I think we're all good. All you guys right. got anything else? I think we're good. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Have a good day. Yeah, you as well. Thanks. Right. So we could just do this one, right?